Today we are here in Miami, Oklahoma at JM Farms and we are going to take a look at the compost that goes into those beautiful mushrooms that we've all seen in our grocery stores. Joining me today is Mark Zordell who is the growing manager at JM Farms. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Can you tell us a little bit, I mean, you've got some beautiful com compost right. behind us. What goes into all of this? So it's a compost made up of wheat straw, chicken litter, gypsum, cottonseed meal, and a little bit of urea okay. and a lot of water. So a nice recipe. Right. And so obviously you're looking at carbon and nitrogen, right? Correct, yep. So tell us a little bit about that process. So we send off lab analysis at each week um, to get more so our chicken litter uh, nitrogen uh, and that can affect how we're doing with our recipe whether we add more chicken litter take chicken litter out depending on what that nitrogen uh, percentage is and then the structure of the compost that kind of stuff that can cause uh, different degrees of breakdown so we want everything to be pretty structured um, or the correct structure for us um, and then that can get us where we can get our composting done in approximately a three week period. Okay, so your base product is wheat straw, is that correct? Correct. So tell us a little bit about how that three weeks begins with the wheat straw. So we start with dunking it, um, getting that uh, moisture um, in the bale and getting that heat up started. Okay. Um, once it sets for a few days, then we'll break it open into big piles and then turn it with water and add the supplements uh, to it. Okay, and so after a few days, it just gets turned and yep. you have to worry about oxygen and that sort of we stuff? We do, so that's why we're turning it, so okay. we don't get anaerobic. Um, so we want to keep that stuff aerobic. And then when it goes from pre-wet piles, it'll go into bunkers. The bunkers then are where we add air to it um, on off a certain amount of times and keep that compost uh, aerobic. And you have special bunkers, is that we right? Do. What? Tell me what's so special about them. So they're an aerated floor. Um, what we do there is we have a huge fan in the back that blows air through the pipes and blows the air up through the compost. So we're checking temperatures there uh, with probes and computer systems on those bunkers. And so what's the ideal temperature that you're looking for to kind of know that process is happening? <laughs> it depends on the stage of the process. So in the first process, you're going to get more of a chemical reaction. So you're gonna get the higher temperatures, 160 degrees plus. Uh, as it goes through the process, you're gonna get more of the biological uh, breakdown. So those are gonna be in the lower uh, temperatures, so 130 or okay. so. All right, and I can see some of these piles here. Um, so is this in the finishing stages? Cause they're still steaming, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, so the ricking barn is in the finishing stages. So um, that compost is still continuing to break down. We do turn it with turners in this stage as well. Uh, to keep that compost aerobic. Um, here, we're just looking for structure. Um, we want a certain amount of breakdown before going into the tunnels and moisture. If we need to add water, we can. Okay. So we have the correct moisture going in uh, to the tunnels and so okay. forth. So these ricks are still in that 120 to 130 degree range. And are you monitoring the moisture levels as well, I would imagine? We are, yes. Okay. So tell me, I, I know it takes, you know, bacteria and stuff to actually create compost and to break down right but you're also trying to grow mushrooms in this later on so right. what do you do to get rid of that maybe contaminated so the, bacteria yeah the bad stuff um, what we'll do is we'll pasteurize that in the tunnels um, that'll kill off anything that's harmful to you or i or the mushrooms once that process has taken place then we'll cool that compost down um, using fresh air and fan speeds okay uh, we'll cool that down and we will um, condition the compost and get it ready for spawning. So when you talk about the tunnels, tell me a little bit about what these tunnels are and, and right. the so, infrastructure that you have in there. So the old way of doing it, we did it in trays. Um, we would add steam to the room. We would heat that steam, or we'd heat that room up to 140 degrees and hold it for a certain amount of hours. Um, it was very um, energy dependent. Um, we had to have uh, a lot of gas, use, gas usage and and different things to do that. Now with these tunnels, these are state of the art. Um, everything's done in bulk. So it's still like it is out here on the, the wharf, but inside a tunnel. Uh, we can control that with fresh air and fan speed. Okay. So we can lower the fan speed down, limit the amount of fresh air um, going in, and we can heat that compost up naturally. And then we hold it for a certain amount of time and we can do that at a lower temperature 
um, because we can do it for a longer period of time. Then we can bring that down and condition it um, and get that breakdown continuing to happen. Um, so everything's very consistent in the tunnels. Or in the trays, it was a very inconsistent and, and uh, it's process. And it's quite a it's quite a piece of machinery that you have in there. Can you tell us what that actual machine does, loading and unloading? Right. So we can actually drive the machine into the tunnels, um, and then it can fill that tunnel uh, evenly from top to wherever we're or from bottom to wherever we set the height at. Mm -hmm. um, we have checks to make sure that they're um, operating consistently. And then um, that way we have adequate airflow through. If we don't fill it consistently, then that airflow is all over the place and your temperatures are all over the place. So tell me about once it's filled up in those tunnels, it sits there for how long and what happens after that? Five to six days is how long it sets in there. Um, once we are ready to empty it, we the day before, we'll cool that compost down to anywhere from 75 to 80 degrees, depending on the time of year. Uh, we will then, bring that uh, compost out so we have a large winch uh -huh. that the net will wrap around we will bring it out using that winch the winch will break the compost up convey it up to um, other conveyors that are taking it over to where we can put it into trays okay on those conveyors we are adding spawn and supplement so spawn is basically like the seed of the mushroom um, and then the supplement is like a fertilizer. Okay, so you don't use spores like a lot of times we think about with right. mushrooms. What yeah. is the difference there? So the spawn is a, a grain-based seed that um, has the spores um, inoculated on it to use as a um, food source until it's in the compost. Okay, so really there's no soil at all in mushroom production, Correct. right? It's all compost, it's all organic matter. Correct. So this is really good stuff, I would imagine, after you're done growing the mushrooms as well. Tell me a little bit right. about after we produce mushrooms. So once it's gone through our process, we do add a little bit of peat um, to the layer uh, in the middle of the process to start um, growing the mushrooms. That is added inside. Okay. But once it comes out after, from start to finish, it's about an 80 day process. So at that um, end of the process, we bring that compost back in trays. We steam anything off um, to make sure it's good for uh, local gardeners and anyone else that wants to use it and make sure any diseases uh, that are present that would be harmful to mushrooms um, are also killed off so we don't spread that okay. throughout our process. Okay, so it's available to anybody who might want to come pick up some good mushroom compost. It is. Can you tell us a little bit about maybe the nutrients for a gardener that might be buying mushroom compost here? Right, so it's gone through our process, so it's going to have um, less nutrients than what it did when it started. Mm -hmm. um, but it does still have a good um, amount of nitrogen for local gardeners. Um, it depends on um, how they use it, whether they want to mix it straight in or they, they want to let it set. We've had uh, people do both, and we've had people have success with both ways. Okay. Do you sell it in bulk around to stores and stuff that somebody could buy it from a, another place? Or? No, oh. we don't. We sell um, to a local uh, factory here that will bag it up and um, sell it to Home Depots and different things after it's gone through a process that they do. Here, we just sell it to um, local customers. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing this information All with right. us, Mark. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.